Hi, I'm CJ Altenberg with TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado, and we appreciate you tuning in this morning. So this morning we've got a 2022 Cimarron Lone Star 28-foot uh, dirty tack setup stand, sitting behind me here. So this is a very unique trailer, and it's a very versatile trailer because if you're needing some, uh, if, if you've got some show cattle, but yet you're using it on the farm and ranch, maybe hauling some pears, some bulls, things like that, this trailer kind of fits because it's not so much geared completely towards show cattle, but also not just a ranch trailer. So again, a dirty tack setup. We'll walk you through that here in a minute, but let's take a look at the drawing on this trailer and I'll go over a couple specs for you. First thing is, again, it's 28 foot on the floor, it's eight foot wide, and it's six four tall. And then we move the escape door ahead of the side ramp, and that side ramp sits about eight foot back from the drop wall. But we'll get into that in a little bit more. But that gives you a good snapshot of the setup of this trailer. Now we do this also in inventory in a 24 footer. So if you don't quite need 28 foot, we, we've got one available in a 24 footer. It is on order, but it is available. And then if you wanna custom build this or put your own tweak on it, we can do that as well. And not to say you're stuck at a 24 or 28 footer. If you want a 25 footer, if you want it 26 and a half, we can do that. So very customizable from that standpoint. But again, again, versatile from the standpoint of now we can use it multiple ways. But let's kind of walk you through on how we equip this trailer because we don't just take a standard stock trailer and maybe just throw a side ramp on it. We do a couple things to make it really nice and, and user friendly for you. The very first thing is, is a single leg electric over hydraulic jack. Again, we're dealing with 28 foot. So if we do have, uh, you know, equipment on this, we un need to unload it, you know, more weight on it. A little bit bigger trailer than kind of your standard 20 and 24 footers. This is a really nice feature because you can literally just reach up here and push a button and up and down it goes. Now this does have a manual override. So if you do get in an emergency situation, battery's dead, we literally can hand crank this trailer off or onto a truck if we need to. Um, very simple to do. We've done some how-to videos on that that you can check out. Uh, over here to the right of that is going to be a battery box because we have to have a battery to operate that jack there. Now, up till the 22 models, we would go in and add a battery disconnect. Now it is standard when you do a hydraulic jack. It was something we were asking for for quite a few years uh, just because if you happen to leave a stall light on, uh, anything or an exterior light on, the switch on the on position, if we unhook this trailer and turn it to the off position, it kills all power to the trailer. So now we're not gonna come to this trailer with a dead battery. That's where, you know, you gotta hand crank it on or charge up the battery or even plug it into the truck and let it run for a little while before you can set it on there. So just kind of some small, nice little features there. If you look at this hitch, this is something that they did a couple years ago. They've uh, been using this 25K B&W coupler. It was actually made by B&W. <laughs> Backstory on it is they were actually up visiting, kind of looking at some of the robotic welders that B&W has and got talking about how they were having issues getting couplers from the manufacturer that they were using. So B&W and Cimarron sat down, they designed this, and here we are today. This is the second uh, generation. There's always been some tweaks, and we're always trying to improve it. But a nice US uh, American made product on the trailer itself. Uh, and again, B&W, very reputable company there. <clears throat> Let's take a look at this neck because Cimarron necks are actually a little bit longer than the industry standards out there you see on a lot of manufacturers. A lot of manufacturers will run a 7.6 or 7.8 long nose. Cimarron does 8.2. I think it also helps the way that how well these trailers pull, but it is really handy to be able to back underneath this with a long box truck with the tailgate down and I can still walk through this area. A lot of manufacturers, since they are shorter, you know, that tailgate is going to come almost to the jack, to the spare battery. You know, it's really, really tight. So you have a lot more, you know, movability through this section with that. One of the other things is, is this gooseneck drop wall. So industry standard has been 50 inches. That changed in the early 2000s from 47 to 50 because the trucks got taller. Well, what's happened over the last couple of years? Truck beds have gotten even taller than that. <clears throat> so we've gone in and done this 53 inch gooseneck drop. 
So now we can level this trailer and we can shoot for about eight to eight and a half inches of bed clearance. Six is kind of minimum I like to see on these using trailers. Uh, not to say that you can't get in your bed on an eight inch gap right here, but with that being said, um, you know, the chances of it are less likely. So now we can make sure the trailer's running level, equal weight distribution on those two axles, and have the bed clearance. I literally like to take my pinky and put it on the top of the bed and maybe just touch the bottom of the trailer. That right there is about eight and a half inches. So when we're looking at that in that gap, again, we can get down to six and it's doable, but that's what we shoot for. So on our using trailers, we like to go and do a 53 inch gooseneck drop for that reason. Now we will take it a case by case basis. You know, if we're dealing with an, uh, you know, a trailer with air ride where it's gonna pick up two and a half inches or you know, 19 and a half inch wheels, those type of things will go in and we'll just leave it as 50 because we're actually picking the box up as it is. The other thing is this is a wraparound nose. So this is an upgrade. You know, uh, standard is our VP nose where you don't have this bottom extrusion that comes on the bottom of the deck and then this piece that ties in. It's just kind of a straight line and then a 90 that goes down. So this wraparound is just kind of a sleeker look to the trailer. Again, we're trying to kind of meet both areas of farm and ranch, but then also you can take it to the show. It's still gonna look really, really nice. I mean, Cimarron's are beautiful trailers as they are. And then this is the new charcoal metallic color. Uh, that has become really, really popular. It works well with a lot of these newer trucks. Uh, and then when you have the silver from the aluminum itself, you know, it matches really well with those newer trucks out there on the market. <clears throat> so here we are looking at this dirty tack setup. And the reason why a dirty tack setup, that name, is because we don't have a solid partition wall as a solid front tack room. What we have is we've actually taken the side ramp, which is usually located up towards the front, we've shifted it back. So it's eight foot from the ramp to the gooseneck drop wall. And then we took the escape door, which is normally on driver's side, and we shifted over here to passenger side. Now what we can do is we can use this front area as a dirty tack room. And then we can use the ramp to load equipment. So when we get in here, I'll show you, but we can take equipment up the side ramp and into that front section, and then you can access it through that escape door basically like a tack room, but again, not sealed off and solid. So then, if you're using it on the farm and ranch side of things, you know, now you're not using four to six foot. Six foot's usually our standard on a lot of our show trailers as far as that front tack room. Well, that's more stall area for you to haul a few more cattle. So here's our side ramp, which is really handy for, you know, just loading and unloading calves, especially in the show aspect. You know, you'll use this side ramp majority of the time. We'll talk about axles and, and load placement of, of items like that as we go along here, but this will give you an idea. So now you can bring your equipment up and then here's a gate sitting between the escape door and the side ramp. Now we do have a slider right here, no threshold. So you can bring some equipment by this, but this is a traveling gate. So if I wanted to bring in some big stuff, I can actually undo this and slide it back past the ramp, bring equipment up, and then slide it forward. Again, the first kind of concepts, we didn't have the ramp set quite as far back. But we, again, as we evolve and we get more customer feedback and how do we improve them, one of the things we wanted to do is, is we decided to go eight foot back because now I've got three different positions between the ramp and the escape door on where I can set this. So it's kind of set right in the middle. So you're really about seven foot ahead of this to where if I want, I can slide it back and then I've got eight foot or I can slide it one more position, I've got six. So you can kind of manipulate that with the traveling gates. The other thing too is these two traveling gates. Now we can really manipulate what we want to do here in the stall area itself. Do we want three compartments? Do we want two? Do we want one? Because if we want one, we can shift all these traveling gates forward and actually lock them up against the nose itself. So if you have, again, maybe you're running a cow-calf pair, you're running a bull, going to those shows, now we can separate them from everybody else without wasting an eight to 10 foot stall area. I mean, that's typically what you see on your standard, you know, 20, 
24 footers, you know, as you get into 28, maybe it's got an additional cut gate, but those are, those are now sizes that we can shrink down. We can give a bull, you know, a little bit more room, but yet not waste a whole bunch of space. So the traveling gates have been a real, real popular option. Uh, again, when we first did these, we were doing one traveling gate with one fixed gate at the back. Everybody wants the ability to do whatever they want. So we've gone in and just done two now, uh, kind of moving forward for inventory purposes. On our 24 footer, we just do one, but we run the track all the way back. So if you wanted to add a second gate, you could. In this instance, you could add a third one. Up here in the nose, just a basic deck. Over here to the right is a brush tray, uh, excuse me, a tray for our plexiglass. Uh, it's basically an oversized brush tray that you see on the horse trailers, but it's four foot long so we can put those four foot sections of plexiglass in there and then they store up out of the way. We put, wanted to put some lights up there so you had some coverage up in the nose. And then you've got your gate that folds up and we've gone in and we've put this lower section of aluminum so if you have some items as if they slide back it'll catch it so they don't come down here in the stall area so let's keep working back a little bit here again we've got the two traveling gates so the first one is a slider with no threshold and then the second is a 48 inch swing with no threshold that goes both directions so again, we've kind of rethought the way things through, you know, normally our, our stock trailers, we have a fixed gate that swings over here to passenger side. Well, if we're loading and unloading off of the passenger side of this trailer, it kind of changes the way uh, our, our thought process is and how these, need, these trailers need to function. So we actually moved hinges over here to the left side. It's easier walking calves in and out of these. Again, that's a lot of great customer feedback on them using the trailer and then us just changing it from that standpoint. So again, these gates can be put every foot so we can slide them forward, backwards. Uh, the, you'll notice on the upright posts, you know, they're kind of a smaller square. And then when you get into where there's door frames and where there's wheel wells, you're gonna notice the six inch wide tube. And that's just for the strength of the trailer itself. So you see these notches with this heavy UHM W plastic that we can actually secure that gate to there. So that's why you see some notches in some and then posts at others. But every foot we can set these gates. Low high tie rails on the inside here. And then we've gone in and you have LED lights in here. So a lot of light coverage in here. We added quite a few lights to this trailer just because of the size, because of the gates are gonna be able to move you know, this one here is kind of cut right in the middle. That one's right behind it. So we want a lot of light coverage throughout the trailer. So again, you can kind of see when you're doing stuff at night. Now, we didn't do rubber mats on this. It, this is standard the way it is. Um, you could, we could go in and get rubber mats added to this trailer. You could do worm flooring, or you just bed really deep in this trailer. Now, as we're looking at this floor, I want you to know that this is the industry's best floor on the market. These are 12 inch extruded deck pieces that go all the way across and then they lock in high and low. It's like a tongue and groove. They actually build these trailers upside down. Uh, so they'll do the bottom rails and the floor and then once that, all that's put together, then they'll flip the trailer and then start building up from there. But extremely strong, as we start piecing this together, it's like Legos. As they just continue to grow and grow, they get stronger and stronger and stronger. So underneath here is these cross members that go all the way across the full length and they're four inch centers. So hoof size of a calf, cow, bull, whatever, horse, wherever they're standing on this floor, they're standing on support beams. So it's the strongest out there in the market. One of the other cool things about Cimarron's on standard is the insulated roof. Now, one, it's really strong and durable, but more importantly is just this stall temperature for the cattle. You know, these are lower profile trailers as cattle, obviously heat rises from the body temperatures. And, and what it does is, is we've actually been able to cut these uh, height of these trailers down because we found out how much cooler these insulated roofs keep it compared to an aluminum sheet. It's about 20%. So it is substantially cooler in the summertime. If we're at shows, 
when in the heat of the summer, heat of the afternoon, you'll notice we'll probably be sitting inside the trailer rather than our easy up tent outside because it is that much cooler in the trailer itself. So that is a game changer as we're trying to keep cattle cool traveling, especially in those summer months. So that is standard on every single Cimarron. And then we've got two way roof vents so we can manipulate airflow in here for the cattle as well. So we can grab air and force it down. Winter months as that body temperature rises, we can open it up and then that stuff gets away from the cattle as well. So that gives you an idea of this dirty tack concept. It has become very, very popular just because again, the versatility. So we have these two upper air gaps with the plexiglass. Every Cimarron Lone Star stock trailer is built with this track already in it. And then they have the notches. <clears throat> so from the notch forward is four foot. Again, that tray up, up there in the nose is four foot. And then they'll try to keep them in four foot sections, but every once in a while they might have to cut a two foot or a three foot or something like that to finish it off. But what you can do is you can remove these and I always try to do them in sections and that just helps you out and, and <laughs> probably just helps everyone uh, from not getting in a fight. You know, maybe the kids took all the plexiglass out and just threw it up in the nose. Uh, you go into a show and you need to put it in. Let's just help everybody out and not get anybody in trouble. Do this, this is a trick. Take out the lower passenger side. Take some painter's tape or masking tape and a Sharpie and write lower passenger side. Do the same for the upper, and then when you go to driver's side. So when you go to put this in, you know what sections go where, and it makes it simple and quick, and again, no one's getting in trouble. Upper and lower tie rails on the exterior here. So if you're showing off of this trailer, you're tying out, just need to tie something to it as you're unloading, you've got that ability. Two 8,000 rubber torsion Dexter axles, 17 five-inch wheels, these are Cooper 18 ply tires. So you have some real serious running gear and real serious tires underneath this trailer. Those are nitrogen filled and balanced. So if the nitrogen will help PSI levels from uh, fluctuating drastically, potentially causing blowouts or flats, if you need to put air to a tire, you can. It's perfectly fine. But a lot of tire distributors are going with the nitrogen. That's the green tab. You also have one year, no questions asked warranty on these tires. If you catch road debris, you have a blowout. You take some pictures of some of the codes. You send it in to Lion's Head. That's the vendor that Cimarron uses. They'll send you a new tire. Um, you also have two years of roadside assistance. Now, this amber turn signal, that's something here at TransWest, kind of like that 53 inch gooseneck drop, we like to do. These longer trailers that are wider, we like the amber turn signals because it works as an extra indicator light from the standpoint of a marker as you look down the trailer, but it, it will flash when you turn your blinkers on and when you apply brakes. So again, they're long, a lot of people don't pay attention, say their car's right about here. When you turn that on, obviously they can't see your back turn signals that amber turn signal is kind of, you know, obviously right above the, the middle of the wheel well there. Maybe not in the middle of the trailer, but hey, you can see that. Then maybe you can see the truck turn signal. But that's a little thing that we like to go in and add to these trailers. We've got the rear gate open here. So as you can see, just a nice big wide open here. Getting in the back of the trailer. Like I mentioned, we've run those rails almost to the back. Now, we don't run them clear to the back. You know, that's about four foot off the back of the trailer because what are you really going to do smaller than that? But you can run it back and then maybe you throw something right here at the back of the trailer on. Maybe it's a generator, maybe some feed, things like that. You've got the ability to do right here. We've got a couple load lights here at the back. And then this is a new feature on these that we've been adding. It's a slam latch. So if we are loading maybe some pears, some bulls, things like that, and we get them crammed in there, I'm a big fan of slam latches for safety purposes. If they start pushing back, now at least it, it catches it. But it gives you time and a little bit safety measures as far as getting your cam latch shut and locked. 
you also have a slider on this back. Now on these eight foot wide trailers, we have the ability to make this a wider gap because now we can get the door out of the way and all the hardware out of the way. That's one of the big things of this new design that they've done on these slider gates is it's all flush with the gate itself. So it gets out of the way. We don't have that hardware sticking out in this opening. But we like to go in on these wider trailers and do this as a 36 inch wide. This way, if you are button trailers up against each other needing to jump something from trailer to trailer with these sliders, you can do that your space there. So we go with these 36 inches when we can. And then it just slides and locks into place. Kind of another safety slam latch. So if you're doing something, somebody can literally be standing over here and just push that across and it locks. Back here we have our light switches. So we have our interior and then we have exterior lights and they're all, all individual. So I can turn on the back, I can turn on the inside, driver side, passenger side, all in kind of their own kind of variation of what you want there. So just flexible for the, the consumer, you yourself and using this trailer. On this side, you're gonna get a lot more tie rail because we don't have a side ramp. We don't have an escape door. We don't have that gap between them. Here's a great place to maybe tie out. This is, in my opinion, I would find the afternoon, uh, the shaded side. I would want this side of the trailer in the shade because now I've got more tie rail if you're using this as a, as a night tie out, you know, you have all this lower, all this upper. Now at the wheel well, Cimarron does build a piece that will attach to the current tie rails and will go across the wheel well itself as an additional tie rail. So those are some things like that we can add to these trailers after the fact. But a nice little feature right there, you have another load light out here. And then this gives you a good look of that charcoal metallic and then the mill finish extrusion. Again, it ties in really well. We've added a few more button lights as far as the marker lights on this one. Dress it up a little bit, but maybe not go the extreme on our, you know, steer wall, steer wall models, that, those air ride completely loaded show trailers. But I'm gonna give you the stock number on this one. Again, it's a 2022 Cimarron Lone Star, 28 foot dirty tack, five in, 211366. If you happen to find yourself in Loveland, Colorado this weekend at the Blackout 8 or the Green and Gold Show that's going on up there. This trailer will be on display along with a 30-foot air ride trailer. So we're going to head, head up there with them today and get them in place. But if you're up there at the show, definitely come by and see us. Walk through these trailers. We'll answer any questions, help you out whether it's something that we have on order, this trailer here in particular, or custom building you something, we can do that. But if you're interested and want to call in, Anybody on the sales team can help you out, and that number is 303-684-3400. We appreciate you tuning in, and have a good day.